join us on Patreon, and become part of our journey to uncover history's untold stories. Your support helps us create in-depth content, bring hidden narratives to life, and keep history alive for everyone. There are moments in history when a page turns quietly, almost imperceptibly, and the world never knows it has changed. A line is drawn in a cramped workshop. An idea forms in the mind of someone the world has not yet decided is worthy of being remembered, and in the soft unfolding of that idea lies the seed of a future invention that will reshape the sky itself. Yet the credit often flows elsewhere, carried along by the privilege of those whose voices history was prepared to hear. In the early 20th century, as machines first learned to climb the air like great mechanical birds, there lived a black inventor whose vision reached beyond the boundaries of the society that tried to contain him. His name was Paul E. Williams, and though he died in obscurity, his rotating wing flying machine design sits as one of the earliest attempts by an African-American inventor to solve the riddle of vertical flight. This is not merely the story of an invention. It is the story of a man who dared to imagine himself into a field that barely tolerated him. It is the story of how intellectual dreams can be overshadowed, silenced, or quietly absorbed into the broader fabric of aviation history without the courtesy of recognition. And it is the story of how, more than a century later, the world began to ask the question it never asked while he was alive, what happened to Paul E. Williams, and why did his pioneering rotating wing design vanish into history's margins while others soared into fame? To understand this story, one must return to the early 1900s, when the modern helicopter existed only as a fantasy of engineers. The Wright brothers had just learned how to ride the wind in 1903, coaxing a fragile glider into flight at Kitty Hawk. Airplanes were still little more than unstable wooden frames stitched with fabric. Vertical lift, the idea that a machine could rise straight up into the air like a dragonfly or a hummingbird, remained one of aviation's hardest problems. Most of the world's famous inventors were Europeans and white Americans. Igor Sikorsky, Etienne Olmichin, Louis Breguet, Paul Cornu. Black inventors were rarely recorded in technical history, even though many worked, experimented, and filed patents of their own. And yet, in this era of enormous social barriers, Paul E. Williams submitted a patent for a flying machine with a vertical rotating mechanism that, by its structure and intended function, can only be described as a conceptual forerunner to the helicopter rotor. His patent, granted in 1908 during the fevered age of early aviation, stood as a bold statement. Someone who the world tried to push to the margins dared to claim space in a field many believed was reserved for others. Exactly who Paul E. Williams was remains partly lost to history. Census documents and scattered newspaper archives suggest that he lived in the United States Midwest, likely worked in a mechanical or engineering trade, and had deep curiosity about aeronautical machinery. What is certain is that he understood mechanical principles well enough to design a rotor-based lifting system long before helicopter technology entered mainstream engineering. In an era when African Americans faced rampant discrimination in education, employment, and patent recognition, even the act of submitting a technical design to the U.S. Patent Office was an act of defiance and brilliance. Williams' design is a vivid reflection of the era's transitional engineering imagination. His machine combined both fixed and rotating elements, using a system of vanes and articulated wings intended to generate enough vertical lift to raise the craft off the ground. The drawings he submitted reveal an inventor thinking carefully about the aerodynamic principles of lift, drag, and torque compensation, ideas that would later become essential in helicopter flight. His rotor concept wasn't identical to the modern helicopter rotor, but neither were many of the era's European experiments. What matters is that Williams was clearly part of the global engineering conversation about vertical lift, even if the world did not care to listen to him. Yet as time passed, a familiar pattern emerged. While other aviation inventors transitioned from prototypes to laboratories to celebrated careers, Williams' work faded into silence. Aviation textbooks did not mention him. Patent histories rarely included him. No technical associations invited him to present. The seed he planted was quietly absorbed into the soil of aviation history, unacknowledged yet undeniably present. The question of theft, of whether his ideas were deliberately taken, appropriated, or informally borrowed, is complicated. There is no surviving evidence of a lawsuit, no documented complaint filed by Williams, no explicit claim against any particular aviation engineer. 
What does exist, however, is the broader historical reality. Black inventors in the early 20th century were routinely overlooked, uncredited, or discouraged from pursuing recognition in scientific fields. Many lacked access to capital, laboratories, or industrial networks that could bring their designs to life. Patent examiners often treated minority applicants with less seriousness. And because invention communication traveled through elite circles from which black thinkers were excluded, ideas could circulate, morph, and reappear in the hands of more privileged inventors who would then receive full acclaim. So when people say that Paul E. Williams' design was stolen, what they often mean is something larger than personal theft. They mean that his place in history was not protected, that his intellectual creativity did not receive the institutional recognition it deserved, and that his early engineering attempt at rotor-based flight was brushed aside until it nearly disappeared. They mean that an invention created by a black mind in an era hostile to black ambition was swallowed by the historical machinery that determined who was worthy of being remembered and who was not. To understand why this erasure matters, one must appreciate the context in which Williams worked. The early 1900s United States was deeply segregated, governed by Jim Crow laws that curtailed opportunities for black Americans. Engineering schools, apprenticeships, and technical programs were largely closed to them. Even when talented black inventors managed to produce groundbreaking patents, such as Granville T. Woods in electrical engineering or Elijah McCoy in lubrication systems, their achievements often faced skepticism or dismissal from white industrial leaders. Many white companies would quietly adopt ideas first proposed by black inventors while crediting their own engineers. This environment made it extraordinarily difficult for someone like Paul E. Williams to enter the mainstream of aviation engineering. His patent officially existed, yet without investment, publicity, or social standing, it remained a paper dream. Meanwhile, European and American engineers with easier access to laboratories, universities, and wealthy backers advanced the technology that would eventually evolve into the helicopter we know today. Igor Sikorsky's successful VS-300 helicopter in 1939 would become the iconic milestone of vertical flight. Williams' earlier contribution, filed decades before Sikorsky's helicopter lifted from the ground, remained unmentioned in that celebrated narrative. But the absence of recognition does not erase the truth. Williams had tried to solve the problem long before the world credited those who came after him. As the decades passed, his name became nearly invisible. His patents slipped through the cracks of mainstream aviation literature. Only at the margins, within African-American historical research, black engineering archives, and the dedicated work of cultural historians determined to restore lost narratives, did his invention begin reappearing in conversation. By the early 21st century, as digital archives made patents more accessible, researchers rediscovered his original documents, marveling at the audacity of an African-American inventor participating in the earliest wave of aviation experimentation. In online discussions and academic debates, questions re-emerged. Why was he forgotten? How many other black inventors contributed to early flight without recognition? And how would aviation history look if their voices had not been erased? The story of Paul E. Williams is not just a window into the history of aviation. It is a mirror held up to the broader American history of black innovation overshadowed by structural barriers. His experience echoes that of many others whose contributions were partially obscured. From Lewis Latimer's critical role in electric lighting to Benjamin Banneker's astronomical calculations for DC sporters, African American inventors have long shaped American scientific progress often without receiving the same historical prominence granted to their white contemporaries. Williams joins this lineage of innovators whose intellectual courage outpaced the recognition their society was willing to grant. Today, historians view Williams' design not as a direct, linear ancestor of the modern helicopter, but as part of the broader intellectual ecosystem in which the concept of vertical lift emerged. His attempt demonstrates that the curiosity and engineering imagination required to dream of vertical flight did not belong exclusively to the privileged few who later became industry icons. He proved that innovation is not the property of a single race, nation, or economic class. It is a universal human impulse. His contribution, once nearly lost, deserves acknowledgement not because it rewrote the technical foundations of aviation, but because it reveals who is thinking boldly in an age that tried to tell black Americans not to think boldly at all. In the end, whether one chooses to say that his ideas were stolen, dismissed, 
or simply overshadowed, the truth remains that Paul E. Williams has earned a place in the history of early aviation. His rotor-based concept placed him among the pioneers who, in different corners of the world, try to solve the problem of how to lift humanity vertically into the sky. His story reminds us that history is not only made of inventions that succeeded, but also of the dreams that were cut short, obscured, or forced into silence by the inequities of their time. And when those dreams belong to people society try to ignore, reclaiming them becomes more than academic. It becomes an act of justice. Today, as helicopters travel across cities, mountains, oceans, and battlefields, their spinning rotors cutting through the air with the elegant force of engineered precision, there is a poetic sense of completion in remembering the man who imagined such motion long before the world was ready to hear him. Paul E. Williams may not have lived to witness the flight revolution he envisioned, but his dreams survived, hidden in the files of a patent office drawer, waiting for a world finally willing to ask the right questions. And now that world is beginning to remember him.